Welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs. And in this video, we are doing a sew along. So the sew along that we are doing is for this uh, dress, which is the first dress in my dress series that I talked about about two weeks ago um, into the new year that I am doing a dress series. This is the first one, which is the tie front dress using Simplicity 8981. So before we get started, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next uh, sew along for um, this dress series. Basically it's the dress series series. This is the first dress in my dress series, which is the first series that I am doing this year. This is the tie front dress. This pattern is the easy to sew pattern. The pattern is Simplicity 8981, which came out back in the fall of 2019. And then I'm just getting around to doing it now. So um, what we are doing is I am following along to view A on the pattern. So let's go over the supplies that you will need in order to construct this top or this dress, actually. I'm not making a top, I'm making a dress. So if the first thing you will need is your pattern, of course, Simplicity 8981. You will also need your instructions just in case you wanna follow along with the instructions. That way you could learn some um, techniques on how to do different things and also make notes on your pattern instructions as well, which we will talk about the pattern instructions here shortly. You'll also need some pins. You will also need your regular disappearing ink. You will need your scissors to clip into your notches a point turner, and you guys know that I do not use scissors to cut out my fabric. I use scissors, I use one for paper, one for fabric, I never mix the two there. And then I use rotary cutters. Now the rotary cutters that I use, I use one for paper and one for fabric. So here's my paper one and this is my fabric one and I never mix the two there. I have a point turner, of course, and then the notions that you will need is one button. Now I just have, I think these are a half an inch buttons, but I believe the instructions called for five eighths. So no, actually the instructions called for a half an inch button as well. You're only going to need one. And then you're also going to need half inch uh, seam bias binding. So um, on the back of the envelope, it says one pack of a half an inch wide single fold bias tape. So I do have the yellow, which is um, a half an inch as well. You're just gonna need a little bit of it. And I am using yellow fabric. The fabric that I'm using is a yellow Ponte scuba net for this project. Now you guys know I always sew with woven fabric. So this is going to be a tutorial for a knit fabric, okay? So now that I covered the tools that you will need in order to construct this dress, let's go ahead and get into the pattern instructions. All right, so I went ahead and took out the pattern. So, you know, basically just, basically I'm gonna show you the outside of the pattern. This is the front portion of the pattern. Like I said, I'm following along to view A on the pattern. And basically, I'm just gonna go ahead and put up the back of the pattern envelope so you can see this um, biggest day instead of me trying to hold it up for you. But the fabrics that you can use is basically any light to woven weight fabrics such, such as your chambray, cotton lawn, cotton type, crepe fabric, double georgette, double gauze, double knit, French terry, linen, ponte, shirtin, silky types, and you can also use suede. So there is a huge a range of fabric, array of fabric that you can use in order to construct this dress. What I would do is if you are not familiar with so many terminologies, I would definitely use cotton, see how that goes. And then if you want to use a different fabric, you could do so then. 
The notions you will need, as I already covered, is one pack of a half an inch uh, wide single fold bias tape and one half inch button. Now the single fold bias tape is basically for your neck binding, which we will get to once we start sewing. Now I wanna draw your attention to the bust, waist, hip, and back neck to waist, which is the body measurement, which is the first portion of this where you see the arrow, all right? So on the bus, basically, it, that's how you pick the pattern that you need. So you will go by your bus. I'm gonna go ahead and put up my bus, my waist, and my hip measurement now. So my bus is a 40 and a half, my waist is a 32, and my hips is a 44. So that lets me know that a 40, based off my bust, it would fall in a size 18, my waist will fall in a size 18, and my hips would fall in a size 20. So that means that I need to pick up the pattern sides between 14 and 22, which is the pattern sides that I picked up. Now, because I'm making view A, my fabric is roughly 58 inches, so I will go to where 18 and 20 lies, and that's the yardage that I would pick up from my fabric. So it says for 60 inch, I would need two and a half yards of fabric for 60 inch fabric. Well, 58 is close to 60, so instead of me picking up two and a half, I would go ahead and pick up three yards of fabric. Now also, please note that the belt says three fourth a yard of 45 to 60 inch fabric. So when you add three fourths to that two and a half, you would get three and one fourth if my math is correct, right? You would get three and one fourth. Now, because of that, that means instead of me getting three and one fourth yard of fabric, I would go ahead and bump that up to three and a half or just four yards of fabric to make an even number and have a little bit left over for any type of errors, okay? Now, I am doing view A, so I'm going to go all the way down to the finished garment measurement. What the finished garment measurement means that that's once you put everything together, what it would be at both the bust and the hips. So like I said, my bust is a 40 and a half. Because I'm using knit fabric, that means that I don't want so much ease like I would if I was doing a woven fabric. So a half an inch ease is good enough for me. So I'm looking for something that's like 41 inches. So because 41 inches would give me that half an inch, I wanted a little fitted, so I'm going to go down to where it says 40 and a half, and then I could just grade that half an inch if I want to, right? So basically, what I'm going to do is look at a size 14 to cut for my bust. Now, if you look at the hips, it says that the hips is a 43 and a half. That means I would have to add a half an inch to the hips as well to get that fit for my uh, butt area or hip measurement area, okay? So on my pattern, which I have showed so many times how to grade your pattern, so I'm not gonna show that in this tutorial, but what I will do is go ahead and um, grade, you could go ahead and grade your pattern if you need to, but depending on if you're using a woven, I always go for two and a half to three inches of ease. If you are using a knit, I always go, I always go for a half an inch, um, ease instead of, you know, basically you want negative ease instead of a lot of ease because it'll be too big. So I'm only going with a half an inch ease for my bust, my waist, and my hip measurement. Now, one thing I want to mention, this pattern does not show the waist. So if you look at the very top where it says waist for size 14, it says that the finished waist is the 28, which means that I would have to grade that up to a 32 or because I want like an inch of room in the waist area, I would grade it up to a 33. With that being said, that leaves a five inch gap um, on the waist. So that means that I need to size up five inches, which means I would take five divided by four, and then that's where I would make that adjustment at the waist, okay? So now that we talked about the back portion of the pattern envelope, let's go ahead and get right on into the instructions and the pattern pieces. All right, so the instructions, we only need six pattern pieces. So we need pattern piece number one, your front and sleeve, pattern piece number two, your back and sleeve, pattern piece number three, your pocket, 
for your loop if you want to make that loop at the back or you could do bow ties which I do have a video for that so you can look up and see that video if you prefer to do the bow ties in the back instead of the loop. You also need pattern piece number five your belt center and then you need pattern piece number six six your belt ends okay. That's if you're doing view A uh, or B, those are the pattern pieces that you need. The only difference is you have like a sleeve band um, at the end of your sleeves um, for view A. So that's the view that I'm doing. Now, if you look at the cutting layout, for all sizes, if you're using a 58 to 60 inch like I am, you would follow along to 1C for view A. If you are doing view B, you would follow along to that cutting layout, okay? Now moving on to the glossary. Now make a note that this uh, pattern does not call for any type of interfacing whatsoever, which is why it's easy to sew. So now moving on to the glossary, the only three things that you need to read over if you have not done so already, what is a narrow hem, what is stay stitching, and what is under stitching. So your narrow hem is the hem that you will make at the bottom, and um, you would do a narrow hem at the bottom of your hem. Stay stitching is done at a fourth of an inch seam allowance, and then under stitching is you would under stitch on your facing piece or in this instance, it would be if you are doing bias tape, you would understitch on the bias tape, okay? So you would press the tape up towards the seam allowance and then understitch there, which I will talk about when we get there, all right? Now that I went ahead and went over the glossary, the, the steps that you would take to sew view A of this dress, we would do steps one, stay stitching the neck edge of both our front, in our back, both front pieces. Step two, stay stitch the neck edge of our back pattern piece. We would go over to number three, doing the loops, turning them out and press them and then attach it to the left back when wearing it, it's on the left back. Pattern piece number six, you would go ahead and attach the back sections together from the hem all the way up to that dot. After you do that, you're going to press that opening in the back um, five eighths of an inch and make a narrow hem. On eight, we are going to go ahead and stitch our shoulder seams together. On step number nine, we'll go ahead and apply our bias tape to the neck edge and then do under stitching on step 10 and enclose that. Step 11, we'll go ahead and add the pockets on step 11, 12, and 13. 14, we'll go ahead and finish off the pockets and go ahead and stitch a fourth of an inch for that uh, half. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct this dress. The first pattern piece is pattern piece number one, which is your front and sleeve. You need to cut two of fabric. The next pattern piece is pattern piece number two, which is your back and sleeve. You need to cut two of fabric. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number three, which is your pocket. You need to cut four. Pattern piece number four. Now this is like your loop, I believe, on pattern piece number four. It's your loop. And you need to cut just one of fabric for that, okay? Pattern piece number five, which is your belt center. And you need to cut two of fabric. Pattern piece number six, which is your actual belt, or your belt end is what it's called, which is pattern piece number six, you need to cut four. And those are all the pieces that you will need. However, I went ahead and did a belt loop, which this is the same belt loop that I have attached and I have shown how to do it. It's just basically um, six inches long by one and a half inch high and I just went ahead and cut one simply because the loop that's on the pattern it doesn't look like it's loop that goes on the side where I could tuck my belt in and keep it on the dress versus just throwing it on a hanger so I went ahead and made my own belt loops and this is what it looks like six by one and a half inch and you just cut one of fabric all right so now that I showed all the pattern pieces that you will need to in order to 
to construct this dress, let's go ahead and get right on into the sewing. All right, so grab pattern piece number one. So I'm going to follow along with the instructions as much as possible. So like I just told you in the instructions, step one is to stay stitch your neck edge of your front and sleeve. Um, I'm doing view A, so it would be pattern piece number one. And then with right sides together, after you stay stitch with right sides together, you're going to pin the two front sections together and stitch them um, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then search your seam allowance, okay? It didn't say all that, but I'm just telling you <laughs> what it is. So what I have already done is I went ahead and uh, stay stitched the neck edge of both of my front pieces at a fourth of an inch seam allowance, because that's what our stay stitches says in our instructions that I just went over, okay? So now what you're going to do is uh, get your other piece. Now I made a little dot right here. You might could see it and you might not be able to, it's blue, to show that this is the wrong side of my fabric. I do not want it to go through. So what I'm gonna do is with right sides together, I'm going to pin my, um, two front pieces together with right sides together. And I'm gonna start pinning at those notches. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and serge your seam allowance on both your front and back piece. I did not do that, I did it to one, but I wanted to tell you this in the tutorial instead of just doing all of it before. So um, you could do it after you serge or you could do it before. I'm gonna do mine after I serge. Um, after I sew my uh, two front pieces together. So just pin at that notch right here. Then you're going to pin at the top and pin at the bottom and then pin along the uh, raw edges of your front. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have it pinned using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch starting at your hem, back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way up to the top. So go ahead and do that and then go ahead and finish off your seams. Now I'm gonna finish my seams separately instead of uh, together and then I'm gonna press my seams open. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and sewn my front pieces together with right sides together, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and press my seams open. So this is what it's looking like. Now you have the option to do some top stitching if you just wanna add some definitions. I'm not gonna do so, but what you can do is after you press it open, you can go ahead and top stitch along the seam allowance about a fourth of an inch to give it some definition. I have not decided if I wanna do that or not yet. I'll determine that um, before I attach my back. Right now, I'm good, don't wanna do that. So let's go ahead and continue to step number two. So step number two, is basically you're going to stay stitch the back. You're pretty much gonna do the same thing like you did to the front. So you're going to stay stitch the back edge. So go ahead and put pattern piece number one aside, grab your back, and I'm going to go ahead and mark the wrong sides of my back like I did for my front. So I'm just going to take this blue chalk and I'm just gonna put like a little Mark right there so I know that that is the back of my back pieces and make sure you don't mark it too dark so it doesn't go through to the other side, all right? So I haven't done this, so you're going to go to your sewing machine and then you're going to um, stay stitch along the neck edge. After you do that, with right sides together, you're going to pin at this notch right here that you have, which is a double notch, you're going to pin right there at that double notch. And then you're going to pin all the way down to the hem of your dress. So go ahead and pin now. All right, now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, and you're going to sew all the way up to this notch and then back stitch at the notch, the notch. Once you do that, I'm sorry, you're going to go ahead and pin past the notch and back stitch at this dot, this dot right here. So you're going to sew all the way from your hem up to the dot, stopping at this dot, and then you're going to back stitch. 
Once you backstitch, finish off your seams or you could finish off your seams now. And then you're going to press your seams open, okay? So once again, let me recap. You're gonna backstitch at your hem. So all the way up to the dot, backstitch at the dot. Now you, you'll be using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So right now is the best time for you to go ahead and serge your seams before you start stitching. You're going to press your seams open. Once you press your seams open all the way up, you'll notice that this portion right here is not sewn. That's because you're going to do a narrow hem, which means that you're gonna press this 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, press to that line, and then press again and encase it and sew it closed on the right side. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my back sewn together, this is what it's looking like right here. And I went ahead and pressed this open. Now, if you notice, I did skip three through five, which is the loop for a reason, because I don't like going back and forth to the sewing machine 50 million times. So what I did at the sewing machine was I went ahead and started constructing my loop, which I'll talk about here shortly. And I went ahead and pressed my seam allowance open and then created a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and pressed all the way up to the loop. Now, at the very back, which is this portion right here on the left hand side, you're going to attach your loops, but make sure you grab pattern piece number four, your loop, you're going to sew with right sides together, you're going to sew at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. After you sew at a fourth of an inch seam allowance, you're going to turn it right side out. Now, I just basically um, pulled some thread from my sewing machine, so I'm able to turn it right side out quickly, just like this. Okay, so I pulled it through and now my loop is turned right side out. I'm going to give it a really good press and cut off the thread at the very end. So I'm gonna cut off the thread and this is what it looks like now. And then with right sides together. Now you can do this uh, if you would like, you could go ahead and baste across and then attach it like this. You can do it like that. You could first baste it across and then attach it if you would like, that's completely up to you. But I believe that the instructions just basically tell you to base your loop to the left back and sleeve at the small dot and then you just have the raw edge open, even. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew at about a fourth of an inch seam allowance just to keep it in place. Maybe a three eighths of an inch seam allowance just to keep it in place. And then after I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and search, make sure that you search the seam allowance here because it's going to be encased as well. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and put my loop in right here, which was step three through five, I also finished the back edge. Basically, I uh, did a narrow hem. I stitched down, pivot across, and then went back up, which was in, I think it was step number seven, I think is that step. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and insert the pockets. Now I know at step number eight, which I'm gonna bring the instructions to show you, Step number eight wants you to sew your sleeves together, your shoulder seams together, right? I will not be doing that right now. I wanna go ahead and do my pockets and then I will attach at the shoulder seams, okay? So I'm gonna skip number eight and currently I am going to be doing number 11, which are, which, are, which are the pockets. So I'll be doing number 11 all the way to 15 now. So go ahead and grab your pockets, which is pattern piece number three. And with right sides together, you're going to attach your pockets at the side seams on both your front and your back. Now I have my back facing up on my table and I'm just gonna scoot it up so you could see that we have dots right here, which is where your pockets will line up. So I'm just gonna grab two. And with right sides together, this is the right side right here and make sure you match up your notches on both sides, okay? And I'm gonna grab my pins. So let me scoot this up just a little bit. 
And then I'm gonna grab my pins and I'm gonna pin at the notch and also pin at the dots. All right, and you're going to go to the sewing machine and you're gonna do this also on your front, the same thing. You're gonna go to your sewing machine and using, I believe the instructions that says to use three eighths of, not three eighths, one fourth of an inch seam allowance and attach your pockets on the side. Now I am going to be attaching my pockets at three eighths of an inch seam allowance instead of one fourth, but that's a personal preference. You can attach your pockets at a fourth of an inch seam allowance like the instruction says. After you do that, you can go ahead and surge a little bit about an inch before and an inch below. Now, one thing I wanna mention is I am sewing my side seams together in one seam, you know, together instead of separately. Now, if you are sewing your seams separately, go ahead and surge, after, surge the pocket area now, now I am going to surge about an inch above my pocket and then an inch below my pocket to have that clean finish on my pocket area on both my front and my back. Now that I mentioned that using, using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and back stitch at the end and sew both of your pocket seams together on both your front and your back side seams. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my pockets on, attached to the side, this is my back pattern piece. So I'm gonna put my back pattern piece out the way and I'm gonna show you the front pattern piece um, because I did something to them, okay? So what I did was I did go ahead and press um, my seam allowance to one side and then I top stitched about a fourth of an inch just to give that nice detail of top stitching on my front, okay? I just felt, felt like it was gonna be nice so I went ahead and did that. Now, on the pockets in the front, you will be doing some under stitching. So what I did was I went ahead and attached my pockets to the side seam the next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and press your seams towards your pocket. Once you press your seam towards your pocket, using a fourth of an inch seam allowance, you're going to understitch on your pocket. So don't understitch on your dress, you're gonna understitch on your pocket at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. You're only going to understitch on your two front pocket pieces. Do not understitch on your back. Once you do that, <laughs> you will attach your dress with right sides together at the shoulder seam. But what you need to do right now is just go ahead and understitch the pockets. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so this is the front. So now that I have my pockets attached to the sides, and then I have also understitched my pockets, only the front uh, pocket pieces. So basically just understitch both of your pocket pattern pieces. Now what I'm gonna do is with right sides together, I am going to attach the front to the back at the shoulder piece. So I'm gonna put my back, uh, back pattern pieces. So I'm just gonna make sure that my back is on the table facing up and I'm going to put my front down on top of it, okay? So with right sides together, that is my back. This is my front. And with right sides together, I am going to attach at this shoulder seam. So make sure you match up your notch that you have here at the shoulder on both sides and then pin all the way across. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have both my shoulder seams pinned on both sides, Using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna start at the beginning and I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning and backstitch at the end. And after I sew um, my seams to both shoulder seams, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off. Now I am going to serge my seams together and then top stitch and make sure that my seam allowance is facing the back of my uh, garment. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just make sure you back stitch at the beginning and at the end and you can either press your seams open or do what I do and press them to the back portion of your garment. Go ahead and do that now. 
All right, so now that I have my shoulder seam sewn together, the front and shoulders at the shoulder seams, I attach both shoulder seams. Now what you need to do is go ahead and grab your bias binding, okay? Now mine's just right here. The first thing you want to do is make sure to open out one end of your single fold bias binding. Now I marked where three fourths of an inch is for me. I'm gonna try to bring this up so you can see it. And then what you're going to do is make sure you uh, allow three fourths of an inch. So I'm just gonna match up that three fourths of an inch seam allowance right at that clean edge right there, all right? And then I'm going to pin all the way around, making sure I do the same thing on the other side. So with right sides together, so if you need to turn your dress out, so I'm just going to pin mine, but you could turn it uh, out so you're able to pin all the way around. So just pin all the right way around your neck edge, just like this, making sure that you open out one side of your bias binding. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my seam binding, my bias tape basically around my neck edge using three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way around my neck area and also back stitch at the end. So go ahead and do that now and make sure that at both ends you have three fourths of an inch seam allowance, you know, extra on both ends. So go ahead and sew three eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end now. All right, so now that I have my um, bias tape attached to my neck area, what I'm going to do is go ahead and press the seam allowance up like this, and then I'm going to understitch about a fourth of an inch on the seam binding. What it does is it will encase it to where you will top stitch. So after you do your um, understitching, on the seam, on the bias tape. So basically you're gonna press this seam allowance right here. So if you turn it to the inside, you're gonna press this seam allowance, the raw edge of your dress up. And then you're going to understitch. Once you understitch, it's going to encase it to where now you have a finished edge like this and then it's going to encase that raw edge. So when you turn it to the inside, you will be top stitch and it'll look like this. And you'll top stitch on the top portion, the right side of your dress. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and understitch. Understitch is done at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna understitch on your bias tape. Once you do that, you're gonna fold in your seam allowance and top stitch. You could top stitch at about three eighths or even a fourth of an inch seam allowance to encase those raw edges into your bias binding. So go ahead and do that now. Now that I have understitched the bias tape portion of my neck edge, right? So what I'm going to do is you're supposed to have all of your seam allowance pressed up towards the bias tape. And then you're just going to fold, make sure that this edge is folded in the bias tape, right? And all you're going to do is fold it over and top stitch, like I just said, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck the ends of my bias tape in and then fold over to where it gives me a nice clean finish on this side. So I'm just going to tuck it in to have that nice clean finish and pin so it stays put. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fold in the rest of my bias tape all the way around and then go to the sewing machine and top stitch. Now, you could top stitch at a fourth of an inch or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. It's up to you and your preference. So go ahead and pin now. Now that I have my bias tape pinned all the way around using, now I'm gonna use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end and top stitch all the way around my neck area. 
go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the neck edge completely done and it's done on the inside as well. So the next thing we're going to do is with right sides together, we're going to pin our pocket and side seam. So make sure that you have your dress with right sides together. So this is the back uh, portion looking up at me. And then I'm just gonna turn it to one side and I'm just gonna do one side and let you guys do the other side on your own. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and match up my pockets and my side seam. Make sure that your uh, seam allowance for your pockets is pressed towards the pocket. Now what you're going to do is pin all the way along your sleeves and the side. So I'm going to pin where my pockets are matching up those two dots that you have um, by the pockets. So just go ahead and pin there. And then you're going to go ahead and pin the length of your dress. Now, like I said, make sure that both seams of your pocket, the top portion and the bottom portion is pressed towards your pocket instead of towards your dress, okay? Now, I'm going to pin at the bottom and pin the length of my dress. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my dress pinned, I'm gonna start at my hem using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning, come all the way up to this dot, backstitch at the end, break my threads, then start at this dot, backstitch at this dot, and come all the way up to the end of my sleeve, backstitching at the sleeve. I want to leave this portion where my pockets are open, do not stitch in between these two dots because you do not want to stitch your pocket closed. After you stitch the side seams, you're going to go ahead and pin and go ahead and sew around your pocket, also using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. After you have uh, sewn together your side seam and your pockets, go ahead and finish off the seam allowance. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so just to recap what I did, I sewed my side seams together with right sides together, and then I finished them off and searched it. Um, I also inserted my pockets. I searched around my pockets, made sure that's clean as well. So that here's my pockets. And then after I did my pockets, um, on step 15, it says to, um, a, a stitch, basically do a stitch a half an inch across the side seam at, of your pocket opening, which is here and here. So if you can see, I'm gonna try to bring this up so you can see it. I stitched across very small stitches there. And then I stitched across here as well, above the pocket, a half an inch above the pocket. But I also uh, inserted belt loops. So if you remember from the very beginning of the video, I said that I was making belt loops only because I hate just having to keep draping my belt, my tie belt over my hanger. I like to have it onto my dress and have it hanging onto my dress. So that's why I went ahead and put in my belt loops here. So I have two belt loops on the side. So I went ahead and did that. Now I'm gonna leave you to do the next two steps by yourself, which is I believe step number 16 or 17 that talks about the sleeves. Um, so basically for the sleeves, you're just going to basically do a narrow hem. So you're going to go to your um, sewing table and you're going to create a 5 eighths of an inch hem allowance basting stitch around, press to that line, and then press up again to um, form your narrow hem, and then you're just going to stitch on the right side of your garment. So you're gonna do that for bo both sleeves. Also, at the very bottom, which is your hem, you're going to do the same thing. Whatever the hem allowance is, which I believe the hem allowance is one and one fourth, but if I'm incorrect, I will definitely put it up on the screen. I just do not have the, well, let me grab the pattern piece quickly. All right, so I have the pattern piece right in front of me now. And the hem allowance is one and one fourth. I was correct, one and one fourth. So what you're going to do, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to either measure, or if you have a one and one fourth inch, um, 
plate on your sewing machine, you could go ahead and create a basting stitch one and one fourth, press one and one fourth first, and then press up that one inch to encase it and then sew on the right side of your um, garment in order to have clean stitches on the right side, okay? So you're gonna do your, the hem of your sleeves and the hem of your dress. Once you do that, in the back, turn your dress over, and in the back on the right-hand side facing you, you will attach your button. So like it says in the instructions, it's a half an inch seam allowance for your, I'm mean, not a half an inch seam allowance, a half an inch button for your uh, button. So you're just going to attach it right here and then uh, go ahead and put it over the loop, all right? So that's step number 19. Now, if you go over to step, I, I believe step 20 was the hem, but now what we're going to do is move our dress over to the side and I'm gonna grab the instructions for you. I'll finish off that part of my dress in just a moment, but go ahead and grab your belt, all right? So that's pattern piece number five and six. So the belt center you need to have cut two and for the belt in you need to have cut three. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mark the wrong side of my belt like I have done for every um, pattern piece. I'm gonna go ahead and mark the wrong side of that on both of my pattern piece number five and six. Now you don't have to do this, I'm just doing this because I need to make sure that I do not use the right side of my fabric and I'm using the wrong side of my fabric, okay? Now, we are currently at step number 23. All right, so I'm gonna move this out the way and I'm just gonna grab two of my tie belt ends and then one of pattern piece number five. So grab two belt ends, which is pattern piece number six and one of pattern piece number five. So I'm just gonna grab one right here Move the other one out the way. And now on step number 23, I just grabbed my instruction. It's a double wrap belt. So basically what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to pin uh, the belt ends to the side seam of number five. That's what you see here on number five. And then you're going to stitch them together using five eighths of an inch and do the same thing for both um, two, two number six and one number five, and then you're gonna do that again with right sides together, you're going to stitch and five eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around, leaving an opening in order to turn out. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like in order to do 23 through 25, all right? So like I said, this is pattern piece number five. So I'm just gonna have pattern piece number five facing up. So this is the right side. And I'm going to have a pattern piece number six, all right? Now make sure on pattern piece number six, this is the end of the tie end. You don't want that in. You want that nice flush in right here where you have a notch. You're going to match that up to one side seam of your belt center, okay? And you're going to pin at that notch, pin top and pin bottom. And you're gonna do that to the other side as well. So do that to the other side of the center front as well, making sure that you have right sides together, all right? All right, now using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and you're going to sew both of the side seams together. You're gonna to do this for this one as well as the other one as well. So go ahead and do both of your tie belts the same way. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the belt center attached to the belt ends, right here with right sides together. I did it for both. Now with right sides together, make sure you match up those seams. Now I press my seam allowance open, but you could press it to one side if that's what you choose to. So what you need to do is pin with right sides together all the way along the top and bottom portion of your belt. So you're going to pin all the way down one end and also pin the ends right here, pin down the bottom. 
you're going to leave about, I'm gonna say a good two inch opening. I'm gonna leave a two inch opening and how I'm gonna do that is I'm just going to place a pin and I can use my mat to tell two inches. So I'm gonna place one there and then I'm gonna place another one about right here, okay? So though that's going to be my two to three inch opening that I'm going to leave in order to turn it out. So pin all the way across. And then once you do that, you're going to go to your sewing machine and use five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to back stitch at the beginning. So I'm gonna start right here at this pin, back stitch at the beginning. So all the way around, making sure that you pivot at each end over here. So all the way around. And then when you get back to this pen, you're going to back stitch. And then you're going to turn it out, give it a good press, and you are all done with your dress. So there you have it. You just finished sewing along with me for my tie front dress, which is the first dress in the dress series. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video. And as always, keep sewing.